Hey, my friends, this is Jay Todd coming to you from the streets of San Francisco, and here's what's happening this week in gambling. This week in gambling has been made possible by America's Card Room. Live events, mega tournaments. Join the next big thing. Visit americascardroom.eu. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting installment of This Week in Gambling. I'm your host, Jay Todd, coming to you from our secret location, high on a hill in San Francisco. No? All right, you got me. I'm in the studio again. But but I was in San Francisco last week attending the Global iGaming Summit and Expo. And boy, did I get some great interviews for you guys. Naturally, we're going to be sharing those interviews with you over the next several weeks, but one of them I'm going to share on today's program. It's with the executive director of the Poker Players Alliance, John Pappas, about what's going on right now with the big news surrounding poker stars and full tilt poker. If you haven't heard about that story, what are you living in a cave? The deal that the U.S. Department of Justice had been working on between full tilt and this French investment group collapsed last week. Not to fear, Poker Stars has stepped up and is now in talks to acquire whatever is left of Full Tilt Poker. This coming almost one year to the day after Black Friday. Since Mr. Pappas is so knowledgeable on this industry, and he was standing right there beside me, I mean, I could have actually just reached out and, and touched him, and I did touch him a little bit, but only to say, John, tell us your thoughts. What's going on? with Full Tilt and Poker Stars. What does this mean for us? And this is what he had to say. Hello, friends. I'm here at the Global iGaming Summit and Expo where I've caught up with Mr. John Pappas, the uh, executive director of the Poker Players Alliance, big time star on our show. Uh, Mr. Pappas, you know, I've known you for several years. I consider you a, a personal friend and acquaintance in the industry. Uh, Black Friday, one year anniversary just passed. We've been through a lot together. Where are we in this poker industry? What, what significant things have changed? I mean, at first Black Friday seemed like a curse, but now we kind of see that it was a necessity. Wouldn't you agree? Well, it, what it did was kind of light a fire, on, not only under the feds, but the states to kind of move forward in a, in a, in a regulated market. And, and, you know, some would view it as a kind of a cleansing of the market, and maybe that cleansing needed to occur. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily hold that opinion because it really left a lot of players in the lurch and a lot of players um, kind of who were professional online players uh, were left without a, an income. And then as you know, millions of players and millions of dollars have still haven't been returned to the players, which is very troubling to our organization as well as to the poker community at large. So Black Friday has been kind of a, um, a curse along with some silver lining and, and we think today we're in a better spot than we've ever been in terms of getting some legislation done now whether it's going to be a federal bill or a state bill it's, it's still hard to say we already know that the states are moving forward Nevada and New Jersey are going to be the first to act and I believe that within the next six to eight months uh, maybe by the beginning of 2013 people who live in those states are going to be able to play online poker uh, for money uh, within those states. Um, now the federal government has an opportunity to get something done between now and the election or when they call the lame duck session and um, we're hopeful and working towards that. Uh, our organization is putting a lot of resources towards that. Okay, you know, uh, <clears throat> earlier, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was at a, a separate conference, uh, the, uh, the, the rumor was that no, uh, Nevada, at least, will have uh, interstate online poker by the end of this year. Uh, New Jersey, of course, uh, believes they're going to have online gambling uh, sometime in 2012. Um, 
But uh, there's also this rumor circulating right now as we're here that I know we cannot confirm or deny that Poker Stars has actually acquired Full Tilt. Um, of course, if this is true, we all know that no matter how the deal goes down, players are going to need to be paid. And Poker Stars, I believe, would have the ability to do that. Um, I know you can't comment on that because it's speculative, but what if it were true? What would that mean for the industry, do you, do you think, just looking into your crystal ball? Well, I think it would be huge, obviously, for the players to get their money back. That's first and foremost our priority. Uh, but secondly, I think it also is good that you know a company like Poker Stars is going to be, if they're going to do this, one would suspect they're also going to be getting themselves out of any legal troubles that they have with the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice wouldn't allow for Poker Stars to acquire Full Tilt unless Poker Stars had done what they needed to do, the convincing that they needed to do to the Department of Justice that you know, they're going to settle whatever the issues are that were related to Black Friday. So that's a positive for that company. They continue to be the world's largest uh, online poker site. And I think, you know, American players would like an opportunity for them to be here in the U.S. again. And, and um, you know, whether that's going to happen or not, it's really going to be up to regulators to define if they're going to be a suitable partner uh, in, in, a, in a state or a federal regulatory scheme, but um, I believe it's a good sign for the players. I think the, the most significant thing is that what this shows, if the rumors are true, that if the Tappy deal fell apart because the DOJ said, you know what, you guys aren't going to be able to play the players either in full or in a timely manner, that means that the DOJ is committed to ensuring that the players get, their, get paid, and I think that's a very good sign for the poker community that if the DOJ is saying the priority for us is that players get paid, then it's a very good sign that the players are going to get paid no matter what the deal is. If it's Poker Stars or somebody else comes in to buy Full Tilt, the players are going to get paid, and we feel very good about that. That's an interesting point I had not even thought about. Thank you very much. You guys have done phenomenal work for a long time, and I appreciate you coming on the show and Thank talking you. to the players Thank out you. there. Congratulations on your new program. It's awesome. Thank you very much. I didn't have to pay them extra for that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get our latest videos as soon as they're published. Visit youtube.com slash thisweekingambling. With all the news surrounding the deal with Full Tilt Poker, which fell through this week, we thought it'd be best to bring in our own expert commentator to talk about this issue. So here he is, fresh from his five-year run in Branson, Missouri, it's Twiggy, the foul mouth sock puppet. Mind is where the is my money, bitch. Yay! 
enough to make a sock puppet curse! Yay! Jeez, the mouth on that guy. Wow. Thank goodness for that sensor beep thing button that we keep having to hit for him. Yeah. I think he picked up that language in Missouri. And speaking of Missouri, you're not going to believe what lawmakers in that state are up to. They want to allow casinos to lend money to customers. You heard me right. Casinos will be able to loan players money to then go gamble with. What sort of idiot thought up this? I mean, it passed a committee vote, 13 to 1, so apparently there's more than one idiot there. Can we bring the sock puppet back? Well, that about wraps it up from San Francisco. Thank you all for watching. Tune in next week for more of what's happening this week in gambling. I, I got to say, I I'm a little disappointed. I've been on the streets of San Francisco for like 10, 15 minutes, and I haven't been hit on once by anyone, male or female. That's one beautiful Shih Tzu.